Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. Southeast Radio. Now let's meet our first guest this morning. Dr. Ed O'Flaherty joined forces with Dr. Tom Linehan to establish a different style of dental practice in Dublin. Ed joins me on the phone now to discuss the Seapoint Clinic. And I'd like to start by gaining an insight into your background prior to starting the Seapoint Clinic. Great. So um, I graduated as a dentist back in 2001. And after that, I went over to London straight away and took advantage of the chance to see a big city and to see how things were done over there straight away. So I worked in a cosmetic practice uh, from day one. And uh, it was a copper, so he had a lot of practice around London and some very nice parts of London. So it gave me a good chance to see how things were done, and I came back to Dublin with some ideas. And a couple of years later, I went on to set up Seapoint with um, my business partner, Tom Lenham, who had actually done the original Reiner website, which was quite an interesting uh, departure for a dentist at that time. Excellent. Now, talk to us about what you learned from your experience in London. Yeah, so I suppose, you know, a lot of practices in Ireland would have been small places, you know, one-man bands over, you know, maybe over a chip shop or over a butcher's. Um, so not, you know, not on the high street. And what I noticed straight away in London was we were literally, you know, on the on the main street in London. It had a big, beautiful signage. You know, it, it was a really inviting place, a place people wanted to go into rather than something you'd be kind of fearful of stepping up the stairs and not knowing what to expect. Um, it was all very transparent in terms of pricing, in terms of, you know, the decoration was very open and very bright. Um, so that stuck with me straight away was just how different it was to anything I'd seen in Ireland. And of course, the cost base was dramatically higher then by moving that business from up over another store to actually taking a footprint on the ground floor in the main street itself. So did it actually justify that additional expense? Yeah, well, I suppose, you know, industry is one of those things. It's, it, it's a really important service and it's important people are comfortable. You know, it, it's not generally a, a super price uh, focused business. You know, people don't choose to get a filling done to save 20 euros if they're going to meet a, a butcher versus a nice dentist, you know. So it's, it's one of those things people understand that if they're getting something better, if they're getting something more comfortable in a more relaxed, beautiful environment, they're happy to spend a little bit more. Now, you mentioned that you joined forces with Dr. Tom Linehan, who, as you say, developed the Ryanair website. So apart from his digital marketing expertise, what else brought you together? So myself and Tom had been in uh, college together um, and actually were in the, the last year of secondary school together. So... We were good. We knew were you know good friends and worked well together for a long period of time. It was actually when we went on an implant course at the same time that we realised we had the same uh, focus on where we wanted to be. And we thought better to work together rather than work apart, and that's literally how Seapoint came about. What areas of responsibility have you, and what does Tom take on? Sure. So Tom is uh, very involved day to day in um, overseeing the clinic. So he'd be, I suppose, op- in charge of operations really. Um, and then I would take on a, a you know, a, maybe a higher view of to how we can grow the area, how we can grow the business. What is the business model that underpins Seapoint Clinic? Sure, innovation has always been a huge part of what we've done. So we started out day one, we invested heavily in technology. And back when we first bought a CT scanner, it was a very, very expensive piece of equipment. You know, it was over 100,000 euros. You had to get it craned into the building from Italy. Um, so literally took the roof off, lifted it in, and it took up a whole room. Whereas now that technology is, you know, it's incorporated into a regular x-ray arm and uh, it can be done in a few seconds, you know. So we've literally seen the technology change over the years um, and get better and better. Um, and it's something we're always, you know, keeping an eye on. Because Tom had a technology background, you know, he, he worked on the first Renner website. He was always involved heavily in technology. We've, we've tried, taken that forward all the way through and, and there's more and more better quality stuff coming out. There's 3D scanners which allow us to, uh, you know, do a full 3D scan of somebody's mouth and we can literally see exactly what's going on and more importantly, probably show the patient what's going on in their mouth so they, they too can see what we can see. And um, that's a huge, huge benefit. And is there a particular segment of the market that you're particularly targeting more than others? Yeah, I think now more and more people are, it's actually younger people who are coming in more so. We, we've always looked after um, people of every age, but we're seeing more younger people coming along now who are taking advantage of changes in cosmetic dentistry. The big one there really is it used to be quite an aggressive treatment to get your teeth improved, to get your smile improved. And then as materials have improved and as techniques have improved, the, the whole, you know, the procedure has become much easier. Uh, for example, we can do instant veneers with composite. 
which is done in the chair in maybe an hour or two, and it can transform a smile very, very quickly. And the beautiful thing about it is it doesn't involve cutting away the tooth. Um, we can also do clear braces where we straighten people's teeth without having to take out teeth, for example. So for patients who are young, they want to keep their teeth for life, and that's our goal too. If we can make the teeth beautiful, make them easy to clean, and make them last, that's a really good combination, and it's proving very, very popular. Technology is forever developing and changing the direction of dentistry. So how do yourself and Tom stay abreast of that advancement that's happening within the industry? Yeah, it's, it's very much an area I would, I would be looking at constantly. So, I mean, in normal times, we'd go to trade shows and, and see what's going on. Um, but obviously, we subscribe to different newsletters. We'd be looking at different videos from different providers. And you know, ultimately, we have a good relationship with some of the big um, dental companies. And they would be, you know, we'd be first in their list, I suppose, as early adopters. They would always show us what's coming in the line and give us a demonstration model, for example, of the newest equipment. Um, so from that point of view, because we've worked with them for you know, 15 years now, we would be front and centre of their thinking when something new is coming out. And what are the latest trends and where do you expect it to go over the coming years? Yeah, so um, 3D printing is in its infancy really in dentistry. Um, we have we, we invested in a 3D printer there just uh, earlier this year. Um, but the technology is, is getting better and better all the time. You know, it takes less and less time to print something and the quality is getting better and better. Um, so obviously, as that time reduces, there'll probably be less and less impressions taken with the standard materials. We'll be able to, you know, in a few seconds, probably print out a, a model of somebody's jaw. Uh, for things like implants, that's amazing, where you can literally make a surgical guide to directly, you know, correctly place the implant in the perfect position. Um, and that technology is really, really helpful. And then for, yeah, for braces, we're able to design uh, somebody's new smile on the software and, uh, you know, go ahead and print their, their 3D braces in a very short period of time. So somebody could potentially come in on the day, decide they want to have their, you know, new smile, see a simulation of how their smile is going to look, and then we could 3D print the first aligners for them. That's the way it will be going. You know, at the moment, it's, it takes a little bit longer, but very soon, I expect the materials will be there to allow us to 3D print the same day and start braces immediately. Ed, are advancements with regard to robotics having any real impact in relation to dentistry? Um, not at the moment. There is uh, there are you know there are robots that can place implants, and probably over time that will uh, move more into the the sphere of what's actually been done day to day in practice. But at the moment, it's 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 still definitely a you know somebody's somebody's skills, and the, the mouth is quite a difficult area to access. Um, and patients, I think, are quite ready for robots to be you know going near them. They need to have the the human touch at the moment. Somebody warm and caring and. Uh, gentle is what people are really looking for. And what about laser technology? Are you doing much with that? Yes, yeah, so we do some uh, laser tube whitening. Um, there hasn't been a huge amount of evidence of lasers being beneficial in day-to-day dentistry. So it's something we've looked at a lot of the time. We do have a soft tissue laser for, for certain procedures, but it's not a mainstream product. Um, there's a lot of marketing behind lasers in dentistry, but the benefit we just haven't seen to incorporate on a, on a day-to-day basis. And of course, in recent weeks, we've heard numerous media reports about people booking dentist appointments in Tenerife. Now, while some of these appointments may be a facade to circumvent the international travel restrictions, is it common practice for Irish people to travel abroad for dental procedures now? I remember graduating and and being in college and and we were hearing all about people travelling to Northern Ireland for dentistry. So it's been with us for a long time. I suppose, you know, whenever a currency changes, there's always a potential change in people's mindset around costs. Um, but again, we would find we have a very loyal customer base who want to come back and, and want to have long-lasting dentistry and want to be cared for over a long period of time. So it's not really a, a transactional, a single transactional thing. It's more about long-term care. And that just can't be done over a you know a long distance. Um, I met a guy who worked in a Hungarian dental practice there last year, and he was looking to move on because his his problem was people literally flew in, got everything done very aggressively in one go. There was no aftercare. There was no consideration of the long term. And it wasn't something he was comfortable doing. Um, and certainly it's not something we're comfortable doing at Seapoint. Um, I would say that there's, the prices haven't, haven't risen for most treatments in a long, long time. You know, we're always mindful of prices. And there are some practices in Ireland now who have foreign dentists and do provide the very cheapest care. Um, so I think there's a, there's a whole range of, you know, of practices at different price points which is a very good thing for patients. Um, We're not the most expensive, but we do try and provide the highest level of care.
Ed, for those people that do take the chance of travelling abroad to save money in relation to dental treatments, what advice have you got for them? My main advice would be make sure you do your research on where you're going. Um, definitely get x-rays and get a, a, you know examination done before you leave in Ireland and make sure you have a treatment plan from Ireland uh, because unfortunately there is a you know a lot of high pressure if you go over to Hungary and you know you haven't got a treatment plan and you haven't you don't know what you want there is a, a lot of high pressure put on you to get treatment done and to get the most treatment possible you know to save more money but ultimately teeth aren't replaceable you know so doing crowns unnecessarily doing bridges unnecessarily not getting the right treatment to save a few pounds in the short term is a very very bad way of looking at it Focusing on the future for Seapoint Clinic, what's in your plan in that regard? Yes, yeah, so we're we're very focused on you know slowly but carefully adding um, extra dentists as um, as the patient demand is growing, um, adding more and more technology. So I think the 3D scanning is going to become more and more important. Um, for example, every time you come for a checkup in the future, I expect you'll have a 3D scan done of your mouth. And um, this is no radiation; it's literally a, it's like a video uh, of your mouth. So you see in a big screen your teeth in 3D. And the beauty of it is, uh, kind of like Google Street View, where, where you can compare views over time, you can see your scan year on year. And say, for example, a lot of patients wouldn't be aware they're grinding their teeth and they wouldn't know they're wearing away their enamel and, you know, ultimately wearing away their, de- their, tentine, their tentine and their, their teeth themselves. But with a scanner, you can see over time, you can highlight in red, you know, even at a microscopic level, the damage you're doing. Um, so you can intervene at an earlier stage with very minimal procedures, like adding a small bit of composite to the teeth you know, getting a night guard rather than having to wait until it needs crowns and all sorts of major rehabilitation. So I think, I think monitoring, 3D monitoring is, is, is going to be a really, really important thing going forward. And finally, Ed, now I know that the Seapoint Clinic has not been your only business venture to date, but before you go, you might tell us about your interests in the whiskey distilling and brewing industries. Yeah, so it was a bit of a departure from dentistry. I think um, having probably inflicted pain on people, I decided to look at some anesthetics and, <laughs> and whiskey and beer were uh, an interesting alternative. Um, so the whiskey was back in 2012. I did a little investment in Dingle Distillery and nothing seemed to be happening with that for a while. So I got involved with a colleague and we were out for a hike one day and we said, why don't we set up one ourselves? So we bought a, a building, uh, an old mill from 1591 in the Liberties in Dublin. And we went through the planning permission process and we got some consultants in and we uh, ultimately we, we ended up selling to Quintessential who are, um, they provide, they do the biggest gin producer in the UK. They they make green oils gin and they made Bombay Sapphire for, for many, many years. And um, so they took it over and now it's the Dublin Liberty Distillery and it really is a beautiful place. It's got, a, at the moment, it's obviously closed to the public, but when it opens again, it, it is the most stunning distillery in Dublin and a real pleasure to see it, you know, up and running and to see the job that was that was done. Um, and then after that, I got involved in Rascals Brewing Company, in who now have a, a tap room and restaurant um, and brewery in Inchicore, just beside the Lewis. And that's a very exciting venture. They're, you know, brewing great beers. It's a really nice craft, um, you know, team behind it. So they're really making really good quality beers. And it's, it's proving very, very popular. Well, if you've just tuned in, that was Dr. Ed O'Flaherty. And I wish Ed and the team at Seapoint Clinic every success in growing their business. Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick.